What's up YouTube? My name is Chad. This is the Wisco Boater Channel. The uh, glass bar has been out on the water twice now and we have been stranded twice. Uh, the first time, as you saw in the last video, the uh, linkage for the gear shift, uh, the gear shift rod that goes down through the, uh, sh the shaft cover there uh, came apart. The screw fell out and the linkage uh, separated and I was stuck in reverse. So got that fixed and then took the boat out uh, yesterday to test it and uh, something happened fuel related um, the boat the motor runs great um, but um, it needs fuel obviously to run great so <laughs> we were out running around the little lake here in Hartford and uh, we're doing just a, basically a full speed run just a lap around the lake and uh, right in the middle of the lake now it's only the lake's only a mile wide so it's not it's it's not a not a real big deal to get stranded out there would have been nice if somebody would have offered to uh, tow us back but out of the 10 boats that were out there nobody offered um, something that I don't think would ever happen up in Sturgeon Bay by the way you get somebody with a with a paddle or an oar in the water on a power boat and you have three or four people immediately stopping to help um, but that was not the case here in Hartford so um, I guess fishing is more important than, than helping people out. So anyway, that's a rant. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to show you some of the things I'm going to do on the engine here. Uh, uh, you can see here I've already got the bowl of the carburetor taken off. The mirror is looking up into the, uh, the high-speed jet. And the bowl is over here on the workbench. Uh, no issues here. I just wanted to inspect the float to make sure that it was still good. It's... It's probably original. Um, I did fill this container up with uh, with some gas and the, the float floats, so that's all good. Um, I am going to replace the fuel hoses. I pulled those off. The This one here, let's see if I can show it. You can see it's starting to crack when I squeeze it. And... Uh, it's probably original would be my guess. This one is interesting because um, these are either quarter inch or five sixteenths inner diameter hoses. This one has a hose inside the hose. So I'm guessing that this hose, because it has a split here, uh, someone decided to put a hose inside the hose and not replace it. So didn't know that until I pulled this one off, but since this one was getting pulled off to be replaced anyway, because it's was, it was starting to crack over here, I went ahead and pulled this one off, bought some new hose, so we'll put that on. Before I do that though, I'm going to take the, uh, the just the cover off of the fuel pump here, this fuel pump and filter. Uh, there's a little screen inside here that I just want to check to make sure that it's, it's cleaned or cleared. Um, since I've got the hoses off, might as well do that. And then we'll come back up here to the carburetor and I'm gonna get the carburetor pulled off completely. Now to do that, there are several steps to, uh, to take to get to that. Because the nut for the carburetor, I don't know if I can show it. Well, you can kind of see it. It's way back in there. So in order to get to that, the starter has to come off. So to get the uh, starter off, I have to pull this tube off. It's a tube that runs up in here into the cylinder head. So I'm gonna have to take this off and then I'm gonna take the whole starter bracket off rather than just the starter. So that's nuts there. Gotta take the ground wire off. The starter's connected to this bracket here. So take the, uh, uh, the negative cable off, and then there's two more nuts in here that have to come off right there. And then the whole starter should just pull off. I'll have to disconnect the positive on this side as well. But, and then we'll get to the carburetor. First things first, let's take a look inside the fuel pump. So uh, before I start with the fuel pump, I should, I should have pointed this out to begin with. Uh, one, the reason that we're looking at the carburetor, obviously we have a fuel issue. Um, when I was squeezing the primer bulb, we were getting fuel basically just gushing out of this 
this uh, hole right here, and I've got that plastic uh, um, screen taken off already. Um, so there's fuel just coming out of this, and then when we got the, uh, the intake screen out of the way, we can see into the, uh, the high-speed jet inside there, and fuel was, when we're squeezing the primer bulb, fuel's also gushing out of the top of the, uh, the high-speed jet. So we thought maybe the needle down here that closes when the float is all the way up was not seated correctly and allowing fuel to go in. Um, but that's not the case. We were able to test that with a little bit of a vacuum. Um, that's, that's seated correctly. The needle looks great, so um, no issue there. Um, and, the, and the float floats. It could have been stuck. That's definitely a possibility. If the float got stuck down in the, in the bowl, then it would allow fuel to come up um, through the needle passage here because the needle would have been down and that allows fuel to, to uh, flow up into the uh, passages inside here. So that's the main reason the carburetor is uh, coming off. I'm gonna clean everything. Anyway, first, fuel pump. All right, so this is pretty easy to inspect. Just undo that screw there. So this is just a piece of mine thing. That's the screen, the f that's the filter for the fuel. Um, I will go ahead and get a pick and we'll, we'll pull it out. It looks, looks clean, but I wanna see the other side just to be sure. Um, not gonna go any further than that. Fuel pump's working fine. Um, fuel is, is flowing through it, no, no problem. So just wanna check the screen. So get this pulled out and show you what that looks like. So I'm just gonna carefully Grab this with the pick. There we go. All right, so you see the screen is perfectly clear, clean, nothing inside the housing here. So we'll just pop this back down in place. And it's just a press fit. But you do want to try to do it without tearing it. Okay, fuel screen filters back in place. And we'll put this back on. Okay, all right, fuel filter inspected. We're good there. So I'm gonna turn the engine, uh, well actually I think I'll just move the camera. And we'll start, uh, start disconnecting uh, the positive cable, the negative cable. Okay, we'll start by removing the negative cable for the starter. Battery is disconnected. I, I have a battery disconnect switch, so that is turned off. And we'll disconnect the positive. Also, the uh, starter key is not in the boat, so there's no way for the solenoid to close. Okay, let me pull that off. I can't do anything without hurting myself. All right, gotta get a Band-Aid. All right, bandaged up. Oops, that's the wrong wrench. All right, I have the starter bracket loose. Um, this line here is gonna have to come all the way off. So, just undo the nut here. Obviously there was a cover right here that I took off. Um, but this is just a 
compression fitting or something or a sleeve of some sort. Yeah, it's a compression fitting. So this is out of the way. Now should be able to slide this off. What am I what am, oh, I'm catching on the Ow. hitting the, the, the ring gear. Yep. It's also causing a problem. All right, well, I'm gonna pop screws loose for this. And see if I, I'm not gonna take it off because I don't want the pole start cable winding to come undone. All right, let me do that and then hopefully this will slide out. Okay, I've got this loose. If I lift up on it to clear the engaging gear for the starter. Okay, well, I got it free. Okay, that's out of the way now. Okay, now I've got access to the nut for the carburetor. So I've got a linkage on the other side to take off and then we'll get the uh, carburetor pulled off. Okay, the electric choke solenoid is disconnected. The uh, plug right there frees up the, sol uh, the choke solenoid from the wiring harness. And then on this side of the engine, the uh, cam follower and linkage to the throttle is now disconnected. So the carburetor is ready to come off with these two, uh, the nut on this side and the one on the other side. So let's get this thing off of here. All right, this is a half inch wrench and we're just gonna have to go side to side here because this nut is only gonna go so far until it runs into the uh, body of the carburetor here. So we'll get this off as far as we can. Right there. Over to the other side, it's the same thing I'm doing over here that I just did over there. You should see the carburetor body start to move out the farther these nuts come out. So the carburetor is now loose. Probably can do this by hand here. thing you don't want to do here is lose the nut down into the cowling of the engine. Get that one's free. Get the star washer off of here without dropping it. Same thing on this side. Star washer and our carburetor comes off. All right, now it's just a matter of uh, cleaning it, making sure everything looks good on the inside. So we'll take this over the bench and uh, get the jets pulled, get those cleaned. And as long as everything looks good without any blockages, we'll just put it back together. I might order a new float just for peace of mind since it's a part. Um, it is Labor Day weekend. I was hoping to have the boat out on the water this weekend, but uh, unfortunately that's probably not gonna happen because I won't be able to get a float 
in time. So might not be any boating this weekend. Okay, with the uh, the carburetor off again on the uh, off the engine, we got it down on the uh, workbench here. I'm going to uh, take the high speed jet, the low speed jet or nozzles, whatever you, whatever you want to call them. Um, basically, just take everything out, make sure everything's nice and clean and clear and cleared. Uh, I did order a rebuild kit, so that's obviously not going to happen today. But I do want to say before I do this, I am not an expert on this. So this is one of those videos where it's not how to do it. It's how I did it. So um, before you comment about something that's uh, done right, wrong, indifferent, whatever it is, this is just the way I'm, way I'm doing it. I'm happy to take comments on uh, the correct way to do it if I've done something incorrectly. But uh, carburetor is pretty simple. So... Um, I just want to make, make note of that, that I'm not an expert. I, I won't be able to answer questions, you know, specific questions about how a carburetor works and why it works. I know how they work, but I'm not the expert. So uh, comment away, but uh, I won't be able to offer any advice on, on, uh, what you should be doing to fix your carburetor. This is just the way I did it. The first thing I'm going to do is take off this one here bigger screwdriver get it broken free there's no there's no clocking or anything um, associated with these these are just orifices that uh, and this one's nice and clear if you can see that or not there no obstructions there there's a little tiny plastic washer so I'll keep that with that one and again these will all get new uh, gaskets, O-rings, washers, whatever's required. So we'll take the high-speed jet out. I can already tell, you can probably see that this cork gasket here is cracked. I'm, I'm, mm, I don't know. I, that could definitely be a source of uh, the problem with fuel just coming out of the, uh, the front of the carburetor which is on this side but we'll see get it rebuilt and see what happens okay got that broke free oh yeah see this that gasket just crumbled so that's a cork gasket and it's so brittle just breaks numerous pieces. So we'll get the high speed nozzle out. It's clear all the way through. I'll still run uh, so like a pipe cleaner or something down down through these. Get another piece of gasket material out of there. Uh, this one here, I'll have to go get a wrench. And when you reset these, I think there is a spec that I'll look up. So the needle on this looks fine. I don't see any... Uh, any wear or grooves or anything wrong with that. It does have this plastic washer threaded on there. I'm gonna leave that there just for reference. But that needle looks good. So we'll clean out all the passages that I can get to. I'm not gonna pull plugs out like there's a plug there. Uh, there's a plug there. Another one up here. I'm not gonna not gonna pull those out. Those are press fit. We'll just leave those alone. The butterfly valve operates smoothly. Choke valve works fine. Uh, this one here is the main fuel supply in. Uh, that I believe is press fit, but I can blow through it. So we know that's clear.
pretty simple devices, these, these carburetors. So here are the parts that I removed. We've got our uh, jets, needles, associated washers, gaskets, and then over here is the, the old float with the float pin and the, uh, uh, the needle for the float valve assembly, which that goes into uh, that little guy right there. That's where that needle goes. And this looks to be in really good shape as well. But the kit will come with a new one, so I'll probably put it in. The rubber, I think it's a rubber tip, looks to be in good shape because that's what seals the hole when the float is up. So we'll just, just put all this in one container here. So there's our parts. Okay, one more thing I can do before I quit for the day is uh, got our new fuel lines here. So I can go ahead and get the supply line hooked up to the, uh, to the fuel pump here, which is gonna go from right here through the case. So you got here to here, which comes into the fuel pump and then out the fuel pump over to the carburetor. So I'll go ahead and hook up the line, the supply line to the fuel pump and I'll put this side on and route it up through here and we'll just leave it hanging free until uh, we get the carburetor put back on. So, and actually it might be easier just to take this off to get it put on and then put that, put this back in place. So let me take this off first and then we'll get this, uh, we'll get this routed correctly. All right, so this is just a uh, 7 16 bolt. Break it free. Take that bolt out, that comes out. So we'll get our hose put on first and let's get our retainer clip put on. Yep, I gotta turn it, turn it around because it's gotta be on this side. Okay, that's how it should look. Now we can feed our hose through the case there. And we'll slide this back in the little Thing where it's captive. Put the bolt back in at a really weird angle here. Get this cinched back up. place we can carefully slide the supply line over the nipple for the inlet and I say carefully because this is plastic It'd be good if I had a hose clamp in place first Come on, well, that is a snug fit. The hose clamp is of course stuck all the way at the bottom. Get that oriented correctly. Let's 
supply hose is back on. We got a, a tight, uh, tight hose clamp over the barb and our clip out here is over the barb there. So that supply line, the fuel in is good. All right, I think we're good there. I'm gonna get the other hose and all I'm gonna do is hook up the, the hose on, on the output of the fuel pump, route it up through here and we'll let it hang until we get the carburetor put back in place. Okay, so it'll look something like that. That one's good and tight. So that will hook up to the bottom of the carburetor here. I did cut it a little bit long, so I might have to trim just a little bit off this end. Let me turn that just a little better so you can see that. Because the routing is, uh, is gonna look something like that. So we've got plenty of extra over here to trim off uh, once we get the carburetor back in place. Because that's, that's pretty, I mean, that's, that's plenty long. But that's putting fuel hoses back on. All right, we are uh, over a week later at this point. Uh, the carburetor rebuild kit did come in last Friday. It's now Monday evening. Uh, we were up on the boat on Thirsty Whale over the weekend. So since it arrived on Friday, I was already gone. Didn't get the carburetor rebuilt to take a glass bar up to uh, Sturgeon Bay to do the, the uh, scavenger hunt, which there's a video coming out on that. It was a lot of fun, had a blast. Uh, we ended up borrowing a, a dinghy uh, to do it. So, uh, and we kind of sort of came in first place. It was kind of a tie, an interesting way to end it, but info is in that video if you want to check it out. It's kind of, it's just a short one. So anyway, we have parts. So this is the uh, original, this is in the uh, new old stock original equipment. You can see the part number here, 382052. 382052. And then I went ahead and bought an, a new inlet screen or control panel is what they actually call this. Um, so the old one is uh, plastic. You can see it's cracked right there. And it also, I think it had another crack. Uh, yeah, another crack right there. Um, and you can barely read the uh, low speed rich lean. So um, I went ahead and replaced that with the, uh, the, the replacement part number 37, or yeah, 379221. Um, so this one is actually metal. So it's got a metal screen and the uh, plate itself or the panel itself is metal. And you can see this one, uh, could optionally be used or probably was originally used for the higher horsepower motors that had a um, high-speed jet that was adjustable, which is why the high-speed rich lean is labeled there. Uh, then you got low-speed rich lean in the middle and then pull to choke. This one, all it originally said was low-speed rich lean. But the exact same panel, the 40 horsepower does not have a high speed uh, rich lean adjustment. It's a fixed jet. So, um, but this is, uh, this is essentially just the exact same thing, just metal. It, the screen is different and it's not, doesn't have this ring housing here, which I don't really know why that would be necessary. It's just a air inlet. So we'll use that. So, Get the parts out of the bag and we'll get to putting this carburetor back together. Get the, uh, the carburetor put back together here. We're gonna start with the high speed nozzle. I'm following the instructions that are in the manual here. So I'm just gonna go in order that they, uh, that they point out. Um, it, in the general instructions here, it says reassemble the carburetor paying particular attention to the following procedure. So that's what I'm going to do. So high speed jet goes in. And I'm going to get the right screwdriver. And as mentioned before, there's no clocking involved here. There is no torque that I could, torque spec that I could find. So I'm just going to essentially cinch it nice and tight. And then our gasket will go on. 
Next would be the float valve seat and gasket. Then the float valve, the actual float and the pin. So this is our new float, which by the way, this is super, super light. This, this is probably twice as heavy. So even though this did float, I don't think, I think that's, I think there's a fuel saturated inside the, uh, inside the float there. These are the exact same thing. We're going to get our float valve seat and gasket. Parts, the parts uh, book just says the float valve assembly. So we'll put this back in. Again, no torque specified here. So, tight, good and tight. Okay, then we take our um, float needle, drop it in there. And then we take our float and put it over the top there. We get our pin here. And let's see, I gotta remember, so it was upside down that, so this goes in this way. I'm not gonna push it in all the way yet because I need to make sure that when the carburetor is held upside down like this, that the float is exactly parallel to the uh, mounting surface of the bowl, which it is. So we'll push this in all the way. And now our carburetor float is in the right position or with the float down you can see the the needle over here is also down which that is uh that gets closed off when the when the bowl is full so that would allow fuel to go up inside there and i think that's what happened was the the carburetor or the float actually got stuck down or sunk and uh, was not floating so that is the operational position of the carburetor float that is verified and by the way it tells you right here that the float level adjustment needs to be parallel with the flange so we're good there all right new gasket just go this way or just go this way okay new gasket and we have four screws here so we'll now put our chamber our bowl back on and really I probably could have reused the old gasket it was in really good shape but it comes with a new one so might as well put in a new one obviously not tightening the screws down all the way to begin with Make sure we get everything lined up. Get screws to go in as they should. All right, float chamber is done. Uh, replace the high speed orifice plug and screw plug. High speed orifice plug and screw plug. Oh, I see I don't remember doing that, but <laughs> that is this little guy right here. I didn't take the orifice out. Um, so we're not gonna have to put that back in, 
but I did just put a new gasket on here. So there's the old gasket. That will get thrown away. And the new gasket will go back on. And the high speed orifice screw goes back in. Okay, new gasket, nice and tight. Now we are to the front of the carburetor and we're going to, uh, I didn't take the packing and packing washers out. They're still in here. So we don't have to worry about that sequence, uh, but then we'll install the low speed needle, which is checked as and verified good. And the instructions here are turning, turning it in carefully, finger pressure, until it comes lightly against the seat and then back off seven eighths of a turn. And caution should be taken to prevent jamming the needle against the, the seat. So there is, that's right up against it. So I'll stop. Let's see if I do seven eighths of a turn this way going to be right about there. Then we install the packing nut, which is this guy. Slides over the needle. Back that off a little bit because we've got to be able to turn the needle. Tighten packing nut until the needle can just be turned under finger pressure. That's where we're at. Okay, then we'll replace the control panel assembly. Okay, got the control panel put back on. Um, used, uh, had some other engine uh, related hardware that was not in use anymore in one of the drawers over here. And uh, added one lock washer to each, uh, each screw and got the control panel put back on. So we're good to go there. And then I gotta put the screw in the top here. Control panel is all done and we can see our choke valve inside operates just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the adjusting knob back on. I'm just gonna put it back in the place where it was. So when, when I took it off, it was pointed just above three o'clock. So we'll put our screw back in and this just expands the collet inside. to lock the adjusting knob in place. Okay. And now our adjusting knob is where it should be. Okay. That is uh, putting the carburetor back together. All right, so stuff some paper in block the opening just to make sure we didn't get any bugs and dust and stuff in there while the carburetor was off. Okay. As mentioned, the gasket's still good, so I'm not replacing it. I was gonna replace it, but the one, the new one arrived damaged, so. Won't be putting a new gasket on, but that's okay, this one's fine. So I'll show you what I'm doing on this side, on the other side. These nuts are somewhat tricky to get back, out, back on without dropping them. Okay, so have to put the washer on just barely.
and then the nut goes between the throttle arm and the bolt it's driven into the engine case Hook up the cam follower, which is the act the throttle lever. Okay, it's back in. Okay, just tight enough to compress the star washer that's in there. Okay, electric choke is hooked back up. I'll zip tie those two wires together to keep that from vibrating. And now we got to cut our fuel line to the correct length. So it looks like I'm probably gonna cut it right about there. And we get our fuel line put back on. Clamps nice and tight. All right, everything has been reconnected except our fuel line supply, fuel supply line, which goes here. Okay. So now we'll do a uh, test with the primer bulb to see if when we get fuel to fill up the bowl that we have uh, no leaks. Make sure our tank vent is open. Okay, that's three squeezes. Four, the bulb is getting firmer. And all right, we've got a firm primer bulb and no leaks. So that means that the float is floating, the needle is up in the seated position and not allowing fuel to come pouring out of the high speed where the high speed uh, adjustment would be where it was coming out before. We'll get everything put back on and then we'll test it out here in a little bit. I'm not going to I'm not going to show putting the uh, starter back on, but as you as you saw when it came off, it's just uh, you know the, the bracket goes here. And then there's a couple of bolts up inside there. Everything is back in place. The uh, starter actually went back on fairly easily. Uh, it was much easier to put it back on than it was to take off. So um, got everything in place and I haven't done anything other than squeeze some fuel into the bowl. I'm not going to attempt to start this tonight because I want to get the barrel down, fill it up with water, and uh, we'll do a test tomorrow with the engine dunked in the water. But I'm just really happy to see no leaks on the carburetor. And uh, everything went back together as expected. So get back to this tomorrow. All right, it's uh, time to see if we can get the engine started. I've got the engine stuck in the barrel. So let's uh, give this thing a try. The bulb is still firm. So we got our two keys, like uh, operating a missile or something. Battery on. E is in. Go choke on. Hmm. Electric choke is not working.
All right, well, there is a successful restart of the engine after uh, rebuilding the carburetor. Uh, you can see we had a real good water flow out the, uh, out the exhaust uh, overflow and water tube there. I did, uh, I did learn a little bit more about how that, that uh, the water outlet in the, in the water pump and everything works when we change the impeller. So water circulates internally until the 145 degree thermostat opens up and then it, and then it recirculates and dumps overboard. So um, I was messing around with the uh, rich lean mixture a little bit on the, on the low speed needle. Didn't really change much of anything, um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it, uh, it runs. I don't know what happened to the electric choke, but because uh, it worked last time I had it out. Yeah, we'll get this thing back out of the water here in another uh, day or two or three or whatever, and uh, go out and do some more testing. So thanks for watching this episode of the Wisco Water Channel. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button, the like button, send me some comments, and if you want to be notified when I post new videos like this one, hit that notification bell. Happy boating, everybody.